Today we're going to be learning Ta'anit Daf Kafhe. We're getting toward the end of the Masechet. Um, next week, Be'ezrat Hashem, on Sunday, we will have our Siyum. Just to review, we're on one of these Siyums where the Siyum really is Monday, so that means Sunday. We're going to have regular Daf Shir in the morning. Anyone joining the Siyum later that day should make sure to learn Sunday's Daf beforehand, and then Monday's Daf will learn at the Siyum, which will take place at 8.30 p.m. Israel time, and wherever that is where you are. And that will be on Zoom and I hope you can all join. So registration's already up. You can get there from the homepage of the site. If you're in Israel, there's a bunch of CMIM happening around. Also in America, if you're part of a WhatsApp group, there's a bunch of groups that are meeting up um, and then to celebrate the CMIM together. If you're in a group and you're not meeting up, if you want, you can suggest to meet up. It's nice to kind of get together and celebrate the CMIM with people in person as well. In Israel, we're going to have a bunch of CMIMs, most of them in Hebrew. One will be in English and Manana at 8.15 Monday morning. If mornings work for you and if you happen to be around, you can join. We're going to do, it'll be a little bit different. We'll finish the Masechet and do a little bit of Chavruta learning for the beginning of Masechet Megillah. Um, I thought to spice it up a little, do something a little bit different and have some Chavruta learning. Um, in Yerushalayim, I'm also teaching at the Siyum there with Rabbi Karen Kirschenbaum. That will be Monday night and that will be on Zoom. That's in Hebrew um, at 8 o'clock Monday night. And so again, there's no regular Shear Monday morning. For everyone to know that, in Modi'im, Rabbani uh, Chamutal Shavah will be teaching from Daf Mishalahen. Um, there's also Siyum in Efrat, Hoshaya, Netanya, Zechron Yaakov, Neve Daniel. Um, there's a Siyum on Zoom for Haredi women. Uh, they have a group that, that learn. And in Midrash, and it's even in Be'er Yerucham, there are going to be Siyums. So go find a Siyum near you and, and learn. Okay, Tuesday's a fast day. But I see someone's asking, but we're learning as usual. We're starting Masech at Megillah on Tuesday morning. So with that, we will get started. Okay, um, we were we were in the middle of talking about Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, who is a type of miracle man, and he is able to bring rain. He's able to stop rain. Whatever he wants, he gets. And we're going to see that in a number of stories. There's going to be a theme about these stories. A lot of them have to do with his neighbors. We're going to see all different kinds of neighbors. He's got some neighbors that are out to get him or trip him up or something like that. And there are some neighbors that are just come to him for advice. And as you can imagine, if you live next to some miracle man, right, you're, there's two possible reactions. Either you're very jealous and you want to kind of say, oh, something weird is going on here. And let me try to see if I can somehow make problems. And the other option is, oh, well, I have a miracle man here. I need some help. You know, he's the guy to go to. So we're going to have stories of both of those types um, about Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa. So now we have um, uh, the end of the page. Okay, have a regila debitu. So we ended with saying basically that this bakol goes out every day and says basically how Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, right? Everyone is sustained because of Hanina ben Dosa, but he basically has one kav of caribs from week to week, and he's basically living in a place where he's got really nothing going on. So now have a regila debitu lemecham tanura kol male de shabto. Okay, his wife would open the, um, she would turn on her oven every Erev Shabbat, which was a pretty good time, right? In general, people turn on their ovens on Erev Shabbat. And Shadya Akhtarta, but instead of cooking, what would she do? She would basically uh, put in something that would smoke up and make it look like she was cooking, even though she wasn't really cooking, okay? So now, why? She didn't want people to think that she had nothing Right? No, no food in her house. She was basically embarrassed. Mishum ki sufa, the Gemara says, right? She was totally embarrassed that she had nothing, no food in her house, and she didn't want people to know that. So what does she do? She basically smokes something up so that the neighbors, remember their ovens were outdoors generally, so their neighbors would see smoke going. Now, one of her neighbors kind of got wind of what was going on. She had a, a bit of an evil you know, deceptive kind of person that was living next to her. We all know sometimes you end up with neighbors like that. Look, I know she's really got nothing going on. That's the truth. I can, I, I see what's going on here. So she says, I'm going to go knock on the door. Sorry about that. So what happened? She says, I'm going to go and I'm going to, the, the wife says, I'm going to go indoors. And basically it's, 
it's interesting, this indoor and is indoors, basically. She goes all the way in. I don't think there's really a connection. I tried to look it up, but it doesn't sound like it's connected. But she basically goes into an inner room because she wants to hide. She doesn't want this woman to see her. And what happens? She knows the woman's going to walk into her courtyard on the way into her house, and she's going to see that there's nothing in the oven. So she goes all the way inside. Eat avid lanisa. But a miracle happens. What happened? She finds, the neighbor finds this, this oven full of bread. And the, the bowl where she would knead the dough is full of dough. So she says to her, Planita, planita. The woman says, Plonit, planit. Aita masa, the kacharich lalachma. Go bring a utensil to quickly get the bread off the. Remember, the bread was always baked on the sides of the walls. You had to do ridiata path. We've learned that before. So go get the utensil that you use to take the bread off the walls of the oven because it's full of bread, right? The, the neighbor obviously realized she was totally wrong. Amrala, so she said, right? You know, she, maybe, it's unclear, but maybe the neighbor's saying, you don't even know you have bread here because a miracle just happened. Could be that she's kind of mocking her when she says that, to which, which is maybe why it prompts this response, Amrala, so the wife says back to her, why do you think I went into this room inside? It was because I was going to get the utensils so I could take the bread out. In other words, I knew this was going to happen. And the bright about this says, Tana, she wasn't just saying, it's partly maybe she was just lying and saying it to basically save face and say, oh, of course I knew that all along. I knew it was full of bread. But the bright says, she really did go in. The reason she went in wasn't because she was embarrassed and she wanted to hide. No, she went in to bring the utensil. Why? Even though she had nothing in her oven. She was, she was used to miracles happening and she figured God would save her face and bring a miracle. I'm related to B2. Now, okay, that's story number one. Story number two. The wife goes to Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa one day. You can imagine this would happen. And she says to him, I'm just going to remind you that we talked about this root sa'ar and how the root comes up many, many times. You're going to see it a whole slew of times today as well. She said, how much longer can we go suffering like this? It's enough. Enough is enough, right? It's like the shoemaker's children, you know, or the shoemaker who goes barefoot, right? Has no shoes. You're the one who brings food to everybody. How could it be? Right? That's how we ended yesterday. The kol olam kuloni zom mishum chanina. He brings sustenance to everybody, and yet he has nothing. So how could it be, you know, what about us? So Amrala, my avid. Remember this question, because this question is going to come up soon, but she's going to be the one asking the question next. So he says to her, what, what do you want me to do? So she says the obvious. Buy rachamei de nitve lachmidi. Right? Go ask God for rachamim so that he'll bring some food for us. And you pray to him for everyone else, pray to God for us as well. Right? This is classic where there's all these people always who help everybody else, but they don't necessarily help themselves. So, by rachame, so he listens to his wife, you know, like a good husband, listens to his wife, and he yatsda kimim pisat yad, all of a sudden a hand or a palm comes out from nowhere. Um, by the way, I see, I'm just going to point this out. I see, Caroline, you're writing that he, she doesn't have a name. And we're going to see even later, this comes up even more, that she doesn't have a name at all. It's very interesting. So this hand comes out, the Yave Lechad Kara Deptor de Dava. Out in the hand that came out from out of nowhere comes a golden leg of a table, which sounds great, right? That's a big piece of gold. They're going to have money. All is great. However, right, good Talmudic stories don't end like that. Chazai Bechalma, she sees in a dream. Interesting, she's the one who has the dream. In the world to come, the tzadikim, the righteous people, are going to be eating on tables that have three-legged tables. And she, and presumably there's a nusach that says she and her husband, Bechanina, are eating on a two-legged table. Basically, what does this mean? This is what we've always talked about in all these sources. If you get your reward in this world, you won't get it in the next world. So in the end, they got this leg early, this golden leg, but it should have been on a table that they're getting in uh, in the future. So now, um, Amrale, so now, okay, so I see, Ruth, you're saying that it says he had the dream. I thought I saw that she had the dream. Yeah, Rashi says, Chazi debitu b'chalma. 
the wife had the dream about it, Rashi says. So I don't know where you see that he had it. But the, in general, the story is very confusing in terms of who, who said what. Right now in the Gemara, it says, Amra le, she said to him, but some Nusra'ot say he said. So there's all different there's all different versions of um, of who said what and, and what it was. So whether he says or she says, Nichalach um, mechal achle. Right, ah, so Ruth, you're pointing at this line, not the previous line. He said to her, I've seen, uh, I've seen in a dream, I see. I don't know. Anyway, it's, this is the part where it's unclear whether he said or she said. So either he says or she says that basically one of us, that do you want to be in the future where everyone else has it like this and you have it different? which is interesting because in this world, they're very different than everybody else. But I guess in the next world, they were hoping at least there will be like everybody else. And here, right, he's saying either, again, either he's saying or she's saying, do you want to be different in the next world? So now, um, Rale, she says to him, umayne avid. So what should we do now? Right, in the beginning, he, she was the one pushing and he was saying, you know, what do we do now? In this case, she says, what do we do? Which therefore makes a little more sense to say that he was the one who said it. Okay, even if maybe she had dreamed it again. Different. Uh, clearly, there's different opinions here. See, someone wrote, Adam wrote the Ein Yaakov. It writes that he was the one who had the dream. So again, one of them has a dream. One of them responds. We're not sure who's who. And then um, he says, um, so what should we do? And then the suggestion becomes, again, it's not clear who says this. Maybe she herself says it. Okay, well, just like you asked for it, let's buy Rachame. Let's pray that they take it away. Buy Rachame Vishaklu. So he prays again, he listens to his wife, he prays again, and they take it away. The second miracle was greater than the first miracle. Why is that? We already know this. It's much easier to ask for something, it's much more difficult to ask to take it away. Okay, which is right. We talked about that with the rain. That Rochoni said, "I won't if too much rain comes. I won't ask to take that back." Okay, so that's the end of this story. Before we move on, I just want to point out a few things that we've seen already in other stories, which is be careful what you wish for. You might not really want it when you get it. Right, that that's number one. Number two, once God gives you something, you know it's very hard to take it back. But you see that Rabbi Hanina Ben Dosa. He's right. We've seen before that some of these rabbis weren't willing to use things that came from miracles and weren't willing to ask for miracles for everything. He seems to be okay with that. Okay, and we're going to see it from stories going forward as well. One day, Banash Mashot, right, which is that twilight time where it was Erev Shabbat, so already Shabbat had come in. He sees his daughter very unhappy. Why are you so unhappy? I had a bottle of oil and I had a bottle of vinegar and they got switched. And I don't know. And I ended up, what happened? I lit, he left him in or the Shabbat. I lit the candles with vinegar instead of with oil. Now I'm worried they're going to go out. Now why is it such a big deal to go out? Well, first of all, it's Shabbat. They can't relight it. And it's not like today. Worst case, our candles go out. But they have no light in their house. Remember, they're poor. This is their only light. So she's all worried it's going to go out. This is... So we're learning this right after the last day of Hanukkah. Miracle of Hanukkah happens to them. My daughter, what do you care? Whoever decided that oil should burn, which is God. He can make vinegar light also. Tana and the bright says about this. It lasted all day, the entire day of Shabbat until they were able to even use it for the candle for Havdalah. Okay, that's the miracle of the, of the oil. Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, another story about him. He had a bunch of goats. Now, you might say he had no food. How could he possibly have goats? We're going to get to that at the end of the story. They're going to ask, how could it possibly be he had goats? They're going to have two issues with him having goats, but we'll get to that later. So he had some goats. Amrule, Kamif Sedan, comes his neighbor. Okay, so we have another neighbor now comes and knocks on the door and says, hey, your goats are ruining my fields, right? Which is classic with goats, right? They eat in other people's fields. It says, your goats are ruining my fields. Amal, right? Classic 
uh, neighbor encounter, right? You know, your thing is causing problems in my garden or in my this. Okay, so Amal, he says the following. If you're right, then nichlinu dube. Then basically what will happen? Bears will come and eat the goats. Ve'ilo, but if you're not right, each goat will grab a bear on its horns tonight. Okay, so basically, you'll see the, the goats kill a bear and bring it back. So what happens? In fact, he was right. His, his goats were not doing anything. This was just the neighbor trying to make issues with him. But each one came back with a goat in its horns. Havala okay, next story. There was a neighbor, the Kabanya Beta, the Lomatu Kishure. She built a house, but what happened was the beams that were supposed to go on the ceiling weren't long enough to go from wall to wall. So what'd she do? She goes to her neighbor, the miracle maker. The the beams didn't get to the walls. Amarla Mashmech, what's your name? Amrali Iku. Okay, interesting, we talked about his wife doesn't have a name, but here, the neighbor, right, he asks, what's your name? Her name is Iku, bit of a strange name. So, Amar Iku, which is really like, if so, that's really the meaning of Iku, in Ken. So, if so, Nimtu Kishuraich, your beams should reach the walls. Okay, we're going to have a, a miracle happen here. Tana Higiu Ad Shiatsu, Amalakan Amalakan. not only did they reach the walls, they even jutted out an extra cubit. Okay, that was the miracle that happened. Some people say it wasn't that the beams themselves stretched. It was that an extra piece kind of attached onto the end of the beams. Okay, either which way they were, you know, they, they did the trick. Tanya, there's another bright about this. I saw that house. And the beams jutted out an ama there and an ama on either side. And they told me, That's the house that Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa did the roof, not because he was, a, he was a, a handyman, but he did it with his prayers. Okay? Famous house. Now they're going to ask the question, going back to the previous story, Where did he have goats from? Exactly, Becky, I see you're asking. So where did he have goats? He was poor. And second problem, you're not allowed to have goats and sheep in Israel because they ruin the land. We're going to get to that. It comes up in Yitin. It comes up in other places as well. It um, comes up above Kama. It's an issue of not having um, goats and sheep and all that. First of all, you might say, what are you talking about? Like now, right when... When, uh, you know, you think of the early people living in the country, you think of, plus nowadays, even there's shepherds and sheep and all that. And, and there was actually a whole question asked when people came back to the land, to Israel, whether they're allowed to have this or not. The rabbis instituted this gzera, not to have small animals, because they eat all the land and they destroy the land. So there was a whole question about whether this is still applicable today. So the Tzitzeliezer and Rav Yosef have a whole uh, argument about it. The Tzitzeliezer says that since this gzera was was null and void for so many years when we were in exile because there wasn't really any Yeshuv Eretz Israel anymore. There wasn't, wasn't much going on here and certainly there weren't a lot of Jews living here and therefore the whole thing was not relevant. Therefore, when Xerah is not relevant for many years in order to, to say it's in, it has to be reinstituted. That's the Tzitzel Yezra's claim, which is why he thinks that it's not relevant nowadays. There's all sorts of reasons to give why not. Anyway, it seems like this Xerah is no longer relevant. So now he says, so two problems. Number one, how could he possibly have because, because he didn't have anything. Number two, even if he did have, you're not allowed to use these. You're not allowed to have them. So Amar Pinchas Ma'ase, we're not going to really have an answer, by the way, of the second question. But Pinchas says, Ma'ase va'avar adam achara petach beitel v'iniach sham tarnigolim. Situation happened, somebody left hens on his doorstep by accident. Umitz atani shtosha rabbi chanina ben dosa. She finds them. She walks outside her house one day and finds these hens. Not only do we have to return the hens, but when she lays eggs, we can't even eat the eggs. You have to return those as well. You ready for the word again? They were tormenting them. And they had all these roosters. They had all uh, hens. They had all these eggs. And they had nothing to do with them. So now... What happens? 
Um, so I assume they were tormenting them for two reasons. Number one, they were filling up their little teeny house that they didn't have space for, you know, or maybe they had a small courtyard. Number two, it's like food in your face that you can't even eat, right? It's, it's tempting and it's very frustrating for them. So what they do, but they weren't theirs, they couldn't eat them. So So they sold them and took the money and bought the goats with the money and then said, when the guy returns, we'll give him the goats. So now we understand the goats weren't theirs, which is very fascinating because when the neighbor came to complain, what did he say? Either you're right and then bears will eat the goats, which means that if he was really wrong, that he was willing to sacrifice someone else's goats, which seems very strange. But I guess he was so confident Anyway, it was the miracle man, so he knew what was going to happen, that he didn't really mean what he, right? He knew that that was never going to happen. So anyway, he buys goats. One day, the guy who lost his, his, his hens comes by. This is where I left them. So Rabbi Hanina hears, he says, you have some sort of marker to say these were mine and I can know to trust you. Amar lo he, and he says yes. Natan lo simam taizim. So he got them back, right? But he got back not the not the chickens, but he got back the goats. Vehein hein ize da aitu dube bekarnayu, and these are the famous izim, right? You can see all these stories passing on. The, this is the famous house that he put together. This is the famous. These are the famous goats that that were the ones who took the who killed the the bears with their horns. Okay, next story. That's the end of Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa's stories, Mr. Miracle Man, who clearly had no issues using his miracles for all sorts of things, right? As opposed to those people who said before, oh, that was with a miracle, we can't touch that, right? And we can't benefit. Rabbi Le- so you see there's different approaches to this kind of thing. Rabbi Lezer ben Pida, Dechika le Milta he was also very poor. Avid Milta, what happened? He did, Milta in this case usually means something. He did something, but here it means he did bloodletting. Okay, now bloodletting, if you remember, we learned about it, that you're, it was something they did for health purposes, but you're supposed to eat immediately after. It's not healthy if you don't. So what happened? He had no food. He had nothing to eat. He took a, a clove of garlic and he put it in his mouth. That was all we had. So he gets weak. Some people say he faints. Vinim, and he falls into a sleep. The rabbis go to see how he's doing. Now, while he's sleeping, they see he's crying, he's laughing, and all of a sudden, a spark comes out of his forehead. Very strange. When he wakes up, why were you crying and why were you laughing? When I was sleeping, I was, God came and sat with me. Right, usually we go to God. This is interesting. Almost like Yativi me. He sat with me. Ba'amrele, and he said to me, uh, sorry, I said to him, Ab Matayat Steir Bahai Almash. Again, this word et steir. How long am I going to suffer in this world? Famarli, Elazar Bini, Ni Khalafta Afhila Alma Miresha, Afsharz Mityalat Bishaata Dibizoni. Do you want me to start the world all over again? Do like a restart? And maybe you'll be born in a time when there's food in the world. So Amar the Kame. So I said to him, Kule Hai Vefshar, is that really possible? Amar Lele. But then I said to him, Dechaye Tfeo Dechayina. He asked the following question Am I going to live more years than I've already lived? Like, let's say I'm 30 right now. Am I going to live another 40 years? Or am I going to live less years than I've already been alive? Like, only 10 years, let's say. Amar Le Dechayet. The years that you already lived are greater than the years you're going to live. To which Rabbi Lazar says, Amar Kame im kein lo bi'ina. If so, it's not worth it. It's not worth it for you to flip the whole world for me to live less years than I've already lived. Amar li. So God said to me, Baha'i igra da amar lo bi'ina. Because you said no. Yahiv nalach la amad ate. I'm going to give you in the world to come. Tleser naharvata de mishcha afar simon. Thirteen rivers of afar simon, uh, afar simon oil, right? Balsam oil, which is the best. They're going to flow like the Tigris and the Euphrates. Okay, that you're going to enjoy and bathe in them. So interesting response. He says, that's it? Nothing else? You can't give me more than that? 
So, I'm Art Lay, and here it starts to get a little tricky. There's many, many different interpretations. So, if I read something and you're reading something different, don't be surprised. Okay, I'll try not to get too complicated here, but it's very tricky to understand what exactly transpires. Amar li, ma So, then he said to me, if I give you more, I'm going to have to take it away from your friends. Like, there's only X amount that I can give, and therefore, you know, I'm not going to take away from somebody else. To which, Amar Lehi, I said to him, Va'anami gavra delayt be'ina. What, you think I was trying to get it from somebody else? No, either he was saying, I was trying to get it from someone who didn't belong in Olam Abba. Maybe I could have his share. Or maybe he was saying, I expected to get it from you, God. Now, it wasn't like I thought you have a finite amount of things, aren't you, God? Can't you just bring anything? Or maybe it's unclear exactly what he's saying. And at that moment, and this becomes very unclear, it depends part, partly how you translate the beginning part, you know, this, this part, what the reaction is, whether this is a positive reaction or a negative reaction, Rashi says it's all positive, but could be negative. So an angel came and basically clapped him on the forehead and a spark came out. And God said to me, Elazar, Elazar, my son, I'm going to shoot my arrows at you. Now, shooting arrows doesn't sound very positive. But it could be shooting arrows of Rashi says of chedvav happiness. Like I'm shooting arrows. I'm so excited that you that you said this. Okay, whether again whether he said it was good or whether God was upset with him for it, it's really not so clear. Okay, next Rabbi Chama Bar Chanina Gazar Anita. We're back to stories of okay. This was stories of poverty and people who are suffering in life and kind of ask God, how much longer am I going to be suffering? That's the connection between these two stories. It was. It was Rabbi Hanina, Bar, uh, Rabbi Hanina Ben Dosa's wife to begin with, who again goes unnamed, which is interesting in and of itself. And then we have the story of Rabbi Lezer Ben Pedat. Rabbi Chama Bar Hanina Gazar Ta'anita Velo Atimitra. So we're going to go back to the genre of stories where they pray for rain, they institute fast, and there's still no rain. And then how do they eventually get the rain to come? Amrule. So they said to him, to Rabbi Chama Bar Hanina, Baharab Yeshua ben Levi, Gazar Tanita, Vata Mitra. Well, you know, what, what happened to you? Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi was able to do it, so why can't you? Right? Not exactly the nicest thing to say to someone. But Amr Lehu, he said to them, Ha Ana, Ha Bar Levi. Look, there's me, and there's Ben Levi. I'm not the same person. I'm not as great as he is. What do you want from me? Amr Lehi. So then they said, again, different interpretations here. Dinete, Vinichavindate. Dinete means to bring. So who are they bringing? They're going to bring, and then we'll have a lot of intent. In other words, we'll pray together. Some people think they're bringing, they want to bring Rabbi Shubin Levi to the place. Some people just say, no, well, if we know Rabbi Shubin Levi, at least maybe the power of all of us together will help. It's a little bit strange to say that because each interpretation is a bit weak because to say they brought Rabbi Shubin Levi and his name isn't mentioned here at all, other than in the beginning where they said, you know, you're not as great as he is, seems a little bit weird. So to say all of a sudden that they really brought him is a little bit strange. And the continuation of the story doesn't seem to support that reading. But to say that they got together and prayed, he already said, Gazar Ta'anita. When you make a Ta'anit, that means we get together and pray. But maybe he was trying to encourage them to pray extra hard. Unclear exactly. So, and it was them, them, by the way, who said it. Maybe the people said, let's all get together and pray. Maybe that was what happened. You know, and because they said it, maybe that meant something more. Right, this seems to support the reason that it, the reading that it was all of them getting together because maybe as a community we can break Tavra is to break. We can break our hearts, meaning make a change in ourselves. Okay, Tavra, you know, is to break because Taf switches with Shin. It's Shavra Lishpol to break. Well, it didn't work. They asked for right. They plead for Rachamim and no rain. Amar Luhu. Here I look at this kind of pep talk. He says to them, do you really want rain to come for, on your behalf? They said, yes, of course we do. So Amal, he calls out to the heavens, Rikia, Rikia, kasi panayich, cover your face, meaning bring clouds. Lo ikase, it didn't work. Amal, then he shouts up, Rabbi Chama Bar Chanina, Kama azim panea rakia. How stubborn is the the face of the of the heavens? Ikase mitra. That seems to get things going and gets covered in clouds and it starts to rain. Again, unclear what exactly brings the rain, but I think it's showing you that there's stages and there's hard work and. 
to get to the stage where God is going to help you, it doesn't come with a snap of a finger, but you have to work hard and, and do different things. Because again, you're not, it's not just a fast, like we said in the very beginning. It's, we want people's actions to change. We want people to have an internal change. And that's something that can't just happen in a moment. Levi gazar ta'ani mitra. Again, we have Levi, he makes a ta'ani, right? Another person, and it doesn't work. Amar lefanav, ribono shalolam. Ali tavi yashavta b'marom ve'enat hamrachem abanecha. He says to God, what? You just went up to the heavens, left us alone, and you have no pity on us? Ata mitra ve'itla. So the rain came, but he became lame. He had to limp on his leg. Amar rabbi elazar, lo'olam al yatiach adam dvarim klape mala, sh'arei adam gadol yatiach dvarim klape mala ve'itla. You should never speak to God in that kind of brazen manner, because look what happened to Levi. So, umanu, and who is this he's talking about? Levi. Vahagar male, is that what caused it? Don't you remember the story? We learned this actually. Vaha Levi achve kida kame de Rebi ve'itla. He was trying to do a bow, a prostration, and it was this special thing. It was almost like a yoga move where he puts his thumbs on the floor. He picks up his body again. There's different interpretations. Some something like a handstand, okay, but like a thumb stand, I would call it. And in the process of showing Rebi how to do this, he becomes lame. Okay, he hurts his body, right? A yoga accident. So isn't that what caused him to become lame? So they say, Hava ha garmale, it's both. And this is like the story with the wall that was falling down, right? When when you're deserving of a punishment, it comes in a more natural way, though. So when he did that kida, that kind of brought in, he did something dangerous, and that brought in the ability for, you know, whoever was, was punishing him to bring the punishment upon him. And also it happened in a more natural way, but it really was based in the sin that he did when he called out to God in this way. Rabbi Chia Bar Luliani, Shamina Mahanach Anani de Kaamre. He heard talking clouds. You ever hear the clouds talking? So, talking clouds in our story. He hears them talking to each other and saying, Native and Native Maya Ba Amonu Moab. Let's bring rain on Amon and Moab. Amar the Fanavri Bonoshalam, Kishinatata Tualam, Chai Israel, Chizarta, Kolomoto Olam, Velo Kiblua. When you wanted to give the Torah, you went and offered it to all the other nations and they didn't want it. Amon and Moab said, No, thank you. We don't want your Torah. Vachshavatan Otenlam Matara, now you're giving them rain? So, what's going on? Enough for us? Shtuhacha. Bring it here. Shadyuhu aduchte. So the rain came in their place. Again, this is someone speaking very brazenly to God. Um, and that's the end of the story. We don't get any sort of critique about him. Tarash Rabichia Bar Luliani. Another thing he said, which is going to be similar with about the um, the issue of tzaddikim. Okay, it's similar because it's something else that the same person said, okay, rather than did, but First he did, now he, now we're going to have a drashav his. My dechtiv, but it has to do with tzaddikim in general, which is our topic really. Miracle men are kind of like these righteous people. My dechtiv tzaddik katamar yifrach ke'erez bavanon yisked. This is a pasuk from Tehilim that we say, in Mizmur Shil Yom HaShabbat, that the, the tzaddik will bloom like a tamar, like a date tree, and like the cedar, it will be like the the cedars of the of Lebanon. Why do you need both the cedar and the palm tree? What's the difference between them, right? They're both big, tall, strong trees. If we just had dates and not cedar, it, it doesn't regenerate. If you cut it down, it won't regrow, right? You cut the trunk, that's the end of the tree. Maybe it's tzaddik. You would say it's like that because it's like a tamar. If you cut it down, that's the end of it. Right? Which some people, Rashi says, we're talking about tchiyat hametim. That there's no tchiyat hametim. He gets cut off. That's the end of his life. There's nothing beyond that. You could explain it possibly in other ways as well. Therefore, it says erez because erez gizom machlif. Now you might say, if you remember the beginning of the masecha, we talked about the kane, the reed, as compared to the cedar and the reed. He's omachlif, it regenerates, but not the eris. And here it actually says the eris does. So it's a bit of a contradiction. We're going to bring up a contradiction, not from the beginning of our Masechah, but from somewhere else that's going to raise that question in another minute. Ilunemar eris velonemar tamar Ma eres eno seperot. There's no fruits. A date tree has fruits, but a cedar has no fruits. Lechach nemar tamal v'nemar eraz. Af tzadik chas v'shalom eno seperot. Maybe a tzaddik doesn't have fruits. Now, what are the fruits of his labor? Either it's children or it's olam haba or something like that again. So you might have thought it doesn't have fruits. Like, the, let's say his, his good deeds won't go rewarded. Okay, 
Okay, therefore it says both to teach you both is going to have os seperot and gizom achlif. Okay, that it re- regenerates. The area is gizom achlif, but wait, in a cedar tree, it really can change. It 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 regenerates, it regrows. Vahatanya, there's a brighter that says. Now, there's different ways you could buy a tree. You could buy the whole tree, or you could buy it for the wood. You're going to cut the wood, and then the tree belongs to the owner, and it'll regrow. So if you buy it for its wood only, how much can you cut down? You have to leave a tefach. Once you leave a tefach, the tree will regrow. That's a regular tree. With a regular sycamore tree, it needs, you need to leave a little more for it to regrow. Bibtulata shikma, sycamore that was never cut ever, shloshat vachim. It needs three hand breaths in order to grow. Bikanim, bikpanim, reeds and, uh, and, uh, vines. Minapkak ulamala, from the knot. Okay, there's, there's these, right, vines coming up and the reeds. There's some sort of lower knot, which is usually where they prune them from. So from there, basically, and then they'll regrow. Bidkalim ubarazim. Now here's our main thing. Notice what things are together: the palm tree, which are the dates, and the sycamore, um, the cedar. Chofer lemata umashlish. You can dig all the way down to the bottom and even take out the roots. Why? Because he knows you're cutting it down for the wood. He knows it's not going to grow again. So he's basically selling you the entire tree. So what do you see here? And there is the ink is umachlif, just like the tamal. So why it doesn't make any sense according to what we just said. And this is something we've learned before. There's different types of eras cedar trees. As he said, There's all different kinds of eras, as we see from this verse, which doesn't really mean that it's different kinds of eras, but we learn there's a tradition that there's 10 different types of cedar trees, and therefore there's the one that regrow, and there's the ones that don't regrow. And therefore, the contradiction is resolved in that way. Okay, next story. Tanu Rabbanama, Sebe Rabbi Eliezer Shagazar Shlosh Esrei Taniyot Al Atzibur Velo Yarduk Shamin. So now he instituted 13 fasts, which is the right the maximum number, and nothing happened. But Achrona, so the end of the last day comes, they're all in shul praying. They get up, it's Chilo Atzibur. Let's say it, everybody goes to leave, right? Kind of, you know, okay, we're done. I don't know what we're going to do now. What are you burying? You're digging your graves. Like if you walk out of this room, that's the end of it. You're going to die. So they all started to cry. Right again, this is about moving the people. He moved them to cry, and then the rains came. Okay, another case. By, by the way, this is Rabbi Lezer ben Hurkunus, the famous, right, the one who gets excommunicated in the. The Tanurosh Alachnai story, the oven. So anyway, he says the 24 blessings, which you say on the, uh, the last set of fasts, the 24 brachot in Shemona Esrei. He was the chazan, and no prayers, got, the prayers didn't get answered. Yarad Rabbi Akiva Acharav. So Rabbi Akiva now becomes the chazan, and right after him. Amal Ravinu Malkenu, right? God, our king, ain't lanu melech elata. You're our one and only king. Avinu makenu leman chal rachem aleinu. For your sake, have pity on us, have mercy on us. Viarduk shamim, and the rains came. So now, right, Rabbi Lezer ben Horkinus is kind of stood up by, by Rabbi Akiva. Havu miran ane rabbanan. The rabbis start to, you know, say bad things about Rabbi Lezer ben Horkinus. Like, well, you're not worthy. Yatzdabat kol. That's why I wanted to remind you of the other story, because the heavenly voice comes down, just like in the story of Tanurosh al-Achnai, trying to prove that Rabbi Lezer isn't so bad, although this one is a little bit not so clear, and says, Lo amra, lo It's not that Rabbi Akiva is greater than Rabbi Lezer ben Horkinus. One of them is willing to pass over things, like get over things quickly and not get angry at people who do things against him. And this one is not, right? We know that Rabbi Lezer ben Horkinus was known to be very, Clear in his thinking and not budging any way in any in any direction. But Rabbi Kiva is a much more even keeled, forgiving kind of person, and therefore um, he ends up his prayers are heard. That's kind of a trait that's important for bringing rains. Even though in the first story, Elizabeth Horkinus was able to move the people, but sometimes if you're not so forgiving, then it's not so easy to move the people. Tanu Rabbanan. Now we're getting to a bit more of halachic stuff, okay, after all these agaritot, just in time for the end of the chapter. 
Tanu Rabanav, Ad Matai Yuag Shamim Yordim, Batsibor Puskim Mitani Tam. How much rain has to come down that we basically decide, okay, we don't need the fasts anymore? Because a little bit of rain, right? We need a lot of rain. How much rain is a lot of rain? Kimelo Berech Hamachresha. There's different ways to understand what this, the knee, Berech is knee. What the knee is describing, is it describing the ground, the furrow, or is it describing the, the plow? To me, it sounds better like the plow, but there are different interpretations. Like the, a knee's length of the plow, in other words, where the plow goes into the furrow, and there's, there's some you know, depth there where it basically fills up the furrow where the machresha goes in, tivrei rabbi meir. Chachamim obrim, it depends on the type of land, the rabbis say. Becharevat, it's very dry, so the water has to go down a tefach, because that's already a lot for one hand's breadth if it's really dry land, because for it to be absorbed into very dry land, you need more rain. If it's bebenoni, to average soil, then tefachayim, two tefachim down. If it's ba'avudat, it's stuff that's already been plowed, ground that's already been plowed, shloshat tefachim, then it has to go even further down for it to be a significant amount, enough, enough amount of rain. Tanya Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar Omer. We talked about did the rain come from above? Does it come from below? We talked about how there's waters above, waters below. Now we're talking about the tahom, which is usually the depths, but they're talking about tahom under the ground and a tahom above the ground, which is in the heavens. So now we had this image once before that it's like a chatan going the krat kala that the rains from above meet the rains from below. So that's what he's saying here. There's no, if a tefach comes down in Lamala, the tahom, the, the water from underneath, greets it three tefachim. It comes up three tefachim. Fahatanya tefachim, there's a different source that says it comes up two tefachim. So how do we resolve that? Lokasya, kamba avuda, kamba she'en avuda. Depends on what type of land. And which way it goes, there's different interpretations. So I'm going to just leave that to your imagination. Whether in worked land, soil, it comes up more, or maybe it comes up less. Amar Rabbi Elazah. Again, this idea of the tahom, the upper and the uh, lower waters. When we do the water libations on Sukkot, which is all to kind of bring the rains. Tahom omer lechavero. One says to the other, the upper one says to the lower ones. Aba Go start bringing your waters up. In other words, the, the merits of our pouring the water libations brings the water up from the ground. I hear the voices of two of our friends. What are the two friends? It's the wine and the water libations going together. I hear their voices and it's time to come. And it's like a wake-up call. How do we know this? From a verse in Tehilim, The Tehom calls to the other Tehom for the voices of your pipes. Remember the pipes in the, in the Mizbech, in the altar, where the water went down and the wine went down. There were these tubes underneath that are called like pipes here. I saw Ridya, who's the angel in charge of rain. He looks like a, like a calf. His lips are open. He stands between the depths of above, the waters above and the waters below. He says to the ones above, bring down your rain. He says to the ones below, bring up your rains. Okay, the Nitzan is the first, right? So we're looking, it's the first buds. And the continuation of that verse is from Shira Shirim. Eit has Amir, it's the time of the, of the pruning. Higia, v'kol ha-tor nishma baritzenu. And voice of the tor, tor is a shore, is, a, is an ox. So that's why they're saying the Ridya is like an ox, and this is a reference to the Ridya. Hayu metanim v'yardu g'shamim kodam ha-netzachama. Now we have this debate that was in the Mishnah. At what point in the day? First, we had how many rains need to come, and then they were saying, at what point in the day do the rains come that we stop the fast, or do we continue fasting? So one said, Tanakama said, Netzachama, from sunrise, and Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Eliezer in the Mishnah said, Chatzot, um, midday, right? If it's after midday, then you still continue your fast. According to Tanakama, if it's after sunrise, you have to continue your fast, even though it rained. So now we're going to see those two opinions in the name of other people, and then we're going to see a third. If it's before sunrise, you don't have to continue fasting. But if it's after sunrise, you have to finish. So Tanakam is Rabbi Meir, which is often in the Mishnah. It's midday, that's the cutoff. Nine hours into the day, toward the end of the day, even toward the end of the day, Right, mincha time, around nine hours into the day, close to mincha time. That's the hour that, right, you, even if it came as late as that, up to nine hours, you could stop your fast at that point. 
How do we know this? And this is a very strange proof. I'm not going to give you a clear cut answer here. But Paul showed down with, with Eliyahu and Ahav. In the end, Ahav gives in. And it seems like he, according to them, he fasted. And it must have been in the afternoon. How they know it was in the afternoon certainly doesn't say so in the verses. But some people say the whole story happened on the exact same day that Navot, the whole story with Navot happened and all these other things happened all on the same day. And therefore, it must have been late afternoon by the time this happened. That's, the, that's one of the interpretations. There's some other ones. They're a little uh, unclear. Rabbi Huda Nesia Gazar Ta'anita, another story. Rabbi Huda Nesia, we saw yesterday also some stories about him. He made a fast. Yerdu lahem kshamim la'achar netzachama. Okay, and the rains came after sunrise. Savar lashlaminu. He thought, I have to continue my fast because Nesachama is the cutoff point. Amar le Rabbi Ami, konu chatzot b'achar chatzot shaninu. No, our version of the mission is before chatzot, after chatzot. We don't hold by that opinion. Shmuel katan gazar ta'anita. Okay, you're going to see is a little bit uh, critical. He institutes a fast. V'yardu lahem kshamim kodam anetzachama. Starts to rain before anetzachama, before they even started their day of prayers. So you think that's great, right? They say, wow, look how great we are. We didn't even have to fa- have to start praying and God already answered our prayers. To which he says, Let me explain a parable to explain the situation to you. To what is this similar to? A servant comes to his master to ask for a gift. The king says, before he even gets there, give it to him. I don't even want to hear his voice. When God answers you before you even pray, that's a slap in the face. It's saying God doesn't want our prayers. So Shuv Shmuel Katan Gazar Tanita, another day he made a fast, a different year or a different time. The end of the day, the rains come. So they say, ah, now we have what you wanted, right? God heard our prayers all day. He wanted to hear a full day of prayers. That's a great thing. This is not a good thing. Here's the parable. Here comes again this Yitzta'er, the suffer. Make him suffer, make him struggle, make him, you know, beseech me seriously. Then I'll answer him, right? After he undergoes a whole, you know, struggle. So what, what does he want? What's he looking for? That's the key. And we saw some cases like that previously where the Chazan got up. He said, bring the winds and the winds came. Bring the rains and the rains come. That's perfect. But if you have to wait till the end of the day, that's not good. And if you don't even get to pray at all, that's not good either. With that, we will end our daf. Um, have a great day, everybody. A lot to think about.